station and welcome to our guest interview. Friday, July 19, 2024, our guests are... And I said, I don't want to go in there. I don't like the building. She's like, oh, please come in. 
And then I went in and I said, I still don't like the building. And she introduced me to the person that owned it. And the lady said, there's nothing wrong with this building. And I said, really? I said, can you tell me the history? She said, well, it used to be a horse livery. And I'm thinking, well, maybe they abused the horses or something. And then she said, and in the Civil War, it was a hospital. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is uh, uh, my most recent investigations. Uh, one is at 4420 Santa Monica Avenue in Sacramento, and it's by Charles Lee's. So that one is to the left. And the things that were happening to him, he sees apparitions around the house, uh, hears knockings on the wall, and what got him to call me is that he was working on his computer and he said that electricity shot out from his keyboard and sh shocked him. So he wanted Dang. yeah, so he wanted an emergency cleansing. So I actually walked him through it on the telephone and he followed oh, wow. me, yeah, he followed my instructions to a T and then he notified me about three days later and he says, Paul the apparitions are gone. The house is located near um, um, a Japanese internment camp back in World War II. Oh. Yeah, and so a lot of the house, a uh. lot of the houses in that area um, have various issues of the paranormal. That's a nice looking house, a nice cute little house. I like it. Very yeah. interesting. And the um, one, so you do mobile ghost hunting and uh, admonishment of spirits over the phone? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, the one to the right, I physically went there because she requested that I go over there and do a Roman Catholic house blessing. Um, the lady's name is Raquel, um, 9932 Stone Oak Way in Elk Grove. And she told me that these entities in that home scare her children and so and, the, and these entities watch over her children which just frightens them to no end so uh, she wanted to call me because a picture on the hallway was thrown to the ground and it shattered um, a child and this sounds like just out of a movie but a child was looking in the mirror she says she witnessed this the head turns in the mirror, but the child was looking straight on. So I, I said, wow, that's, you know, because I've seen stuff like that in the movies, you know, so. That house wasn't buried on a Indian burial ground or something, was it, recently? Uh, that, like uh, yeah, I, I couldn't find any information of that sort, so. Oh, is there a way that you, that you research the place and find out if there were deaths there or that maybe they weren't available? Oh, I, I do. I, I sent that over to Lori. Lori couldn't really find anything of this house which would cause it to be haunted. And well, now the, I tell you, if I were a ghost, I would be haunting that place because their lawn is terrible. We <laughs> 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 need a lawn doctor. But the, but the owner says that the previous owners used to play with a Ouija board. So they, yeah, so they opened up a portal, and you've got all these entities, and you get handprints in the mirror, and the mirror is so high, and they got little children, there's no way those children can put those handprints up there. Um, her children have an imaginary friend, and what just freaked her out, and she says, okay, let me call Paul is that the entity was telling the child to French kiss a little girl. Oh, yeah. not good. And they said they do not watch any kind of, you know, adult type of movies. Things. Yeah, yeah. And that child should not have known something like that. So she says, yeah. okay, get over here. So anyway, I did my Catholic uh, house blessing and everything. Uh, one week later, she calls me and she says, "Thank you, Paul. It is gone." So, I was, su I was successful with both houses. Oh, okay. This is the one. Uh, uh, Charles Lee. 
Uh, that was the one at um, 4420 Santa Monica Avenue in Sacramento, where the keyboard was uh, electric, 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 oh my God, I'm t talking like Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, so you know, electricity that's for a lot of people when they have this, uh, <laughs> this <laughs> that's global around the world right now. Uh, 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 He's lightning uh, now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, this is an apparition. He says this photo is an apparition taken at his house. And to the left here is a demon looking through the window at the same house. Yeah, that does look like a demon. It actually looks a little bit like Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> stuttering, stuttering Joe. See, that's what I get for making fun of them. Okay, okay. So Marysville Hotel. No, sorry, can you imagine like Joe Biden looking in your window? That would just scare the fuck out of me. You know, he would be looking to see if this is his house. Right. Or is he living there? Are you Joe? Or 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 he has zombie eyes. Oh my God, he really is just. <laughs> oh, this is the Marysville Hotel. Uh, it caught on fire, and they said that there's an apparition in the uh, in the window. Can you see the apparition? I, I can. Yeah. Well, what is that apparition? When did it catch fire? Oh gosh, about maybe about a month ago. And the Marysville Hotel is very, very haunted. I actually did an investigation there. Got all Isn't kinds. Is it on the haunted hotels list? Yeah, I, it might be. Yeah. There is actually such a thing. David said, "What? There is at the haunted hotel list that you can go yeah. to see. Queen Anne is one of those that's on the haunted hotel list." Yes. And I would, uh, I would, I'd stay at a haunted hotel. I really would. Uh, this is the same place. Uh, the keyboard. With the electricity, that was um, like a hand. yeah, he says that's an apparition. I'm not sure about that. It does, I no. mean, it doesn't really look like an apparition. Okay, my sister got me jealous. Uh, she's going to this lunatic asylum, and like, she, like she, to stay there for good or just no, just she's going to go on the black light indoor tour or whatever. So yeah. So uh, she sent these to me. Looks Black really. Black into a mini golf. Huh? Will you play with demons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, she sent this Only to me. One. So it looks like she's becoming a paranormal investigator. So. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So if you're what playing is, what is Black, Black Sheep Squatch. Sheep Squatch. If you're playing Black Light indoor mini golf, would it be a black hole in one? I would think so. Oh, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> Okay. You know, you're not supposed to outdo the host with the uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have not had enough of my coffee, so. She's still thinking about Hulk Hogan taking off his shirt. Okay. I would tune in for that for sure. Um, now, I, I put these both on the same page, but what is the. Uh, oh, the oh, side? yes, yes, yes. Um, the one to the left, the picture to the left, was submitted by Kathy Orange. That is a ghost, if you look on the left-hand side, at Monterey Bay. And there was a drowning in that location. That could be the drowning victim. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I see. Okay, I see, it's, I see it's off there. Uh, now, you have this article in here. Uh, you wrote this. Mm -hmm. Paul Dale Roberts, Halo Paranormal Investigation, Shadow Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, okay, just a rundown. This is another investigation that I had. So I've been pretty busy. Okay, um, uh, this Stockton house, as you're looking at it right there, um, they see this shadow creature, shadow person walking around the house constantly. Um, the occupant of the house, Kristen Simmons, she contacted me. And she says, Paul, please check it out. But she goes, I don't feel there's a threat, so you don't have to do a cleansing. I go, okay, cool. So I did an EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, check throughout the whole house and nothing. So I went outside, and I did get an EVP. And the EVP says, go away. We don't want to talk to you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So 
I said, wow, this is amazing. So anyway. Um, I used to get that for years. I was a salesperson. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There go you away, go. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I played the EVP, and she still didn't want a cleansing. So I, I consider this as a Casper haunting, where it's no threat to the occupants. And she contacts me about two weeks later, and then she says, okay, now I want a cleansing. She goes, and because the shadow person or whatever is really harassing her. So um, I sent over another Did team. Did it get worse after you went out there? Um, I guess it did because then, you know, for her to contact me two weeks later, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> you know, that sounds like something that I said to my ex-husband. Go away. I don't want to talk to you ever again. <laughs> so I had another team who went over there. They did a cleansing. And it seems like they were successful and they got rid of it. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's three cases I had right there. So did you want to read that article? No, no, no. no. It's okay. Just, too much. You know, no, no, I'll, I'll be like stuttering Joe. Blah, 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 yeah, well, yeah. actually, I mean, I could read it if you want. Okay, if you want to. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Kristen Simmons reached out to us with a peculiar and intriguing case of paranormal activity at her home. Her dad has built the house himself, and to her knowledge, no one had passed away there except for a few pets. Despite this, both Kristen and her stepsister, Deborah Ortega, have been witnessing a shadowy figure moving about the house. Kristen recounted seeing the shadow outside her bedroom door, confirming it wouldn't have been her sister who was busy elsewhere in the house. The house was broken into a few years before, and it required major repairs. As such, Kristen and Deborah had only recently moved back in and started noticing the shadow man. They didn't feel the presence was evil or demonic, but it was definitely making itself known. Kristen asked if we could investigate the phenomena occurring in their home in Stockton, California. HPI Paranormal Investigators on the case. I, along with one of our new investigators at the time, Brian Ingwinster. Can you say his name? Ingerson? Sounds Ingerson? good. It sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. uh, took on the case. Brian asked numerous questions during the briefing with Kristen. Uh, the primary concern was identifying if the house was indeed haunted, as both Kristen and Deborah had seen the shadowy figure primarily in the kitchen area and the hallway. Given that Kristen felt the entity posed no threat, no cleansing was planned. The investigation. Brian systematically took photographs of each room in the house, aiming to capture any anomalies. Meanwhile, I conducted an EVP sweep through the house. Though there were a few instances of what sounded like Class C whispers or breath sounds, these could easily have been attributed to Paul himself. You talking about you? Yeah, most uh, likely me. <laughs> <laughs> Despite our efforts, no significant evidence was captured inside the house. Entities sometimes seem to avoid ghost hunters. Probably because they know you're they're hunting you're hunting them, possibly stepping aside outside to evade interaction. With this in mind, we decided to extend our inv investigation outdoors. Outside the house, we finally caught a breakthrough. We recorded a Class B EVP of a male voice saying, "Go away, we don't want to talk anymore." <laughs> this response. <laughs> This response indicated that the entity, much like a living person avoiding someone at a party, stepped out to avoid us. The voice suggested a clear desire for privacy, validating Kristen and Deborah's experiences. Final thought. The investigation confirmed that the house had paranormal activity. The recorded EVP outside suggested the presence of an entity that preferred not to interact with us. Given the nature of response, I concluded that the entity was not hostile. In fact, I believe the entity might be a friendly spirit, perhaps a deceased relative or friend, looking over Kirsten and Deborah. The fact is that the entity did not exhibit any harmful behavior aligned with Kristen's initial feeling that it was not a threat. So that, that's going to be, like, difficult to try and determine, uh, you know, malevolent, not malevolent. Yeah. So, yeah, two weeks later, she wants a cleansing. So, anyway, I'm glad that everything settled down over there. Wow. That was uh, interesting. You, you get yourself into some really uh, interesting situations, but you must really enjoy that. Yeah, now, you, I do. You, you sent me a pen and teller. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very short. It's only 20 seconds. Yeah, very short. Very short. Oh. 
I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. Marikova. She's a true Maya princess. Your Highness, in the year 2012, will there be a major catastrophe where many, many people may die? No, no hay ninguna catastrophe. Okay, so now we all in, in the community know that there was an exchange of the Mayan calendar, and there were many predictions that were made in 2012 that actually didn't transpire. One was that they said that uh, they, some people said that they saw the White House under water in uh, 2012. Also, uh, there was a time traveler that John Titor that said that there were going to be political events that were happening, a civil war, etc. And so I'm looking at 10 years forward to that because I actually worked as a legal word processor and I had a, uh, I had worked with one of the first uh, companies that made dedicated word processor, MBI. I asked my, my manager what that meant and he said nothing but initials because people were coming and they were saying, are you the National Bureau of Investigation? And I'm like, I don't think so. So I acquired a 4,400, but John Teeter had a 5,400, so the difference between that was 10 years, which would be a decade. So I added on to that 2012 prophecy to 2022, and now we started seeing some events precipitating world wars and uh, civil unrest. What are your thoughts on that? Why did you ask me that question? Well, it's funny that you mentioned John Teeter because... I was actually contacted by John Teeter the second. I was too. Oh, you? Wow. Yeah, okay, to him. that's amazing. Because um, I was freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> and I was supposed to interview him. I was supposed to go down to Los Angeles, and at this Star Trek site uh, where they filmed Star Trek by these boulders, I was supposed to do an interview with him there, and it got. It went viral that I was going to do this interview, and everybody was coming down on this John Teeter II, saying that he was phony, he was a fraud, and everything else. They were going to uh, meet him over at the, where we're going to do the interview at, beat him up, all kinds of crazy stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah so, he was getting threats. He also collects watches. Did you know that? No, no, no. And he sells watches. I mean, if you were a time traveler, I'd be selling watches. Yeah, so, yeah, this guy, yeah, he, so he told me, he goes, Paul, I do not want to do the interview now. So, and then after that, he was just mysteriously disappeared. Yeah, I contacted him, and he said that he and his wife had kind of gone into hiding because wow. of all of the threats that, but why did you ask that question about 2012? No, um, because uh, Penn and Teller, they flew me down to Chichen Itza in uh, Mexico. And then Teller flew you down to Chichen Itza, Mexico? Yeah, and I did that TV show. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and that's, they wanted me to ask. They told me, they said, ask the Mayan princess, you know, is there going to be some kind of devastation of the world after 2012, and so, yeah, that's the reason why I asked Why did that. they then ask you to ask that question? Because apparently they were researched and oh, there some allegations that something was going to happen there. The reason why they flew me down there is because I wrote this huge article about 2012 and uh, the pros and cons if the world was going to end or if it's not going to end, blah, blah, blah. And so they said, hey, you know, we like this article. Would you like to go down to Mexico, blah, 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 and do this and do that? and do an investigation, but it was just, uh, they had fun with it, they made me climb up these uh, uh, steps on this pyramid, and I said, why do you guys want me to climb these steps, and they said, we want you to count the steps and see if it coincides with 2012, I said, but in the pamphlet, it tells you how many steps there is, they said, just climb the steps, so they're, I said, yeah. Yeah, so they're filming me, climbing these steps and I get halfway and I go and I'm out of breath and I go I lost count so it was just all fun. did they start over no <laughs> no it was all it was all in fun it was all in fun how you know. many steps were there Paul oh god I I think it was something like 200 or something like that so um, yeah. maybe 212 yeah